Well, Pastor Chris here from Glory Baptist Church. We obviously don't have Kidmen at our normally scheduled time and location tonight, but I wanted to bring a message to our families anyhow. Normally we would not have had Kidmen tonight because we were supposed to have the next couple of days off of school, but with things as they are, uh, I think we will share this message with you anyhow and use it as you see fit. The message tonight is a story out of the Bible, comes from Luke 15, 11 through 24, and uh, the title is Please Forgive Me. It's the story of the lost son. Most of us, well, at least a lot of us, have siblings. We have a brother, we have a sister. I've got a younger brother. Um, there's just the two of us. And uh, Jesus tells this parable about these two brothers to help people understand something that's important. And as you may remember, Jesus did and said uh, just so many things to various crowds of people that would follow him everywhere. Most of the time, he'd take care of their needs. He'd teach them, he'd heal the sick, uh, he would feed them. But sometimes even Jesus needed a break and he'd have to, you know, go climb a mountain or, or sail away on a boat or something just to, to get a moment to himself. But then there were these religious leaders, the, these Pharisees, and these were some people who were pretty angry at Jesus. And they were angry that all Jesus cared about was, was people. He cared about all the people, even the ones who didn't seem to be following their rules. And you see, the Pharisees believed if you followed the rules, then that would make them closer to God than anyone else. So Jesus told them a parable to teach them a lesson. Now, there was once a man with two sons. One day, the younger son went to his father and said, Dad, give me my share of the family's property. This comes from Luke 15, 12. This was a strange request because usually a son wouldn't get a share of his family's property until the father had passed away, had died. And so the father looked at his youngest son and he said, Why, son? Why? But eventually the father agreed and gave him his inheritance. All right, son, I'll... Uh, I'll divide the property between you and your, your older brother. Now the younger son's like, great, awesome. I'm packing up. I'm getting out of this place, right? So the younger son, he packs up, he moves away, goes to a, a faraway country. And in this faraway country, the son takes all that money that he got from his father, all of his inheritance, just wastes it. And, you know, he gets there and you can imagine, he's like, let's see, what can I get? I want some candy. I'm going to buy some video games. I want to buy some pizza. Yeah, I'm going to buy lots of pizza. Pizza for everybody. But the problem is the money didn't last forever. He, he was wasteful. He didn't save it. He wasn't wise. Jesus said it this way. This comes out of your Bibles. Um, this comes out of Luke 15, 14 through 15. Let me open to that. There it says, the son spent everything he had, then the whole country ran low on food, so the son didn't have what he needed. He went to work for someone who lived in that country, and that person sent him to the fields to go feed the pigs. So the younger son's like, well, I've spent all this money, now I guess i got to go get a job. So he gets a job, and it's a job feeding pigs. And he was still, he was so hungry because... He didn't have any money, there was a shortage of food, and he like, he's out feeding these pigs, and he looks at the pigs, and he looks at, you know, like, what they used to do is basically anything that was left over, the pigs could eat. And so they called it slop. There was a slop bucket. You could just take anything left over in the kitchen, just whatever, cuttings, trimmings, whatever, and it would be in there, and they would take it out and put it in a trough and feed it to the pigs. And so that was just this guy's job. And he's like, his stomach is growling, he's hungry. And he looks at what's in this and he's bringing it out to the pigs. And he looks at the slop and he's like, oh, I'm so hungry, that, that looks good. I, I kind of want to take a bite, even though you know some of it might have been pretty gross. And then finally, as he's doing this, he kind of comes to his senses a little bit. He realizes, Man, I was about to eat pig slop. Oh, that's 
how low have I sunk? And, and all of a sudden he's like, this is crazy. What am I doing here? He's like, even, even my father's servants have plenty of food. And here I am. I'm about to starve to death. No. Oh, there we go. Uh, I got an idea. I know what I'll do. I'll go home and I'll, I'll beg my father to make me a servant. I mean, he's probably not going to take me back as a son, but he might take me back as a servant. I'll say this, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you and I am no longer fit to be called your son. But would you take me back at least, make me one of your, like one of your hired servants? That comes from Luke 15, 18 and 19. So the son, he gets up and he, he makes his way back home from the country he was living in. And when the son could just barely off, way off in the distance, see his family, his house, he could see somebody. And he noticed, that looks like my dad. And, and he noticed that his father started coming towards him. Now, as we know in the story, the father's heart was filled with love and he, and he runs straight towards his son and he puts his arms out and runs up and he says, my son, my son, you've come back to me. And of course, this youngest son says, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you and I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But the father, the father was so happy to see his son that his son has returned. So he calls for his servants and he says, servants, hey, uh, quick, go, go get my best robe, right? Get it out of the closet. Bring me my best robe. Put it on him, right? Put a, put a, put a ring on his finger, right? Give, it, give, him, give him some jewelry. Put some sandals on his feet and go get that, that, that special calf we've been saving, that fatted calf. We're going to have a special celebration. It was reserved. Go get that kill it because we are going to have a feast we're gonna celebrate this son of mine was now was dead and now he's alive and he was lost and now he's found and, and that comes from Luke 15 22 through 24 and so they celebrated because the lost son had returned now you can imagine as all this is going on everybody's watching and seeing what's happening most people, most people would be pretty happy. But there was somebody in this story who wasn't real excited that old little baby brother came back, right? And he guesses as to who it is who was unhappy that that little brother came back and that dad was happy about it. Well, you're going to have to come back next week to get the rest of this story. But it's a very dramatic story, especially the part where the father runs out to the son, hugs him. I mean, think about it. The son had done so many things wrong. First, he had asked his dad for his share of the property before it was the right time. You're supposed to wait for dad to die before you get that stuff, and to ask your dad that, kind of insulting. And then, right away when he gets it, he takes it, cashes out, moves away, and then he wastes all of that money. Spends it on crazy dumb things. Nothing of value. But then when the father sees the son coming, He's so happy to see him again. Why? Well, because he loved him. And he forgave his son for all the things that he had done wrong. And there's a reason why Jesus told that story. He wanted the religious leaders to understand that it isn't that just some people are good and some people are bad and that God only loves the good people. That's not right at all. Jesus wanted them to understand that all of us, Every single one of us, pastors too, we all need God's forgiveness. The bottom line is this, everyone needs to be forgiven. Now here's the great news. God is always ready to forgive us because he loves us. No matter what we've done, he's waiting to welcome us home, just like the father in the story is. So boys and girls and moms and dads and anybody watching, I would invite you, Pray with me here. Pray with me and thank God for the loving, just lovingness of him and the way he shares his love with us. Let's pray. <clears throat> God, we are so thankful that you love us so well. We're so thankful for your forgiveness. And God, it's true, each and every one of us, we, we mess up and we fail. We fall short of your glory 
All of us need to be forgiven. But God, you never turn your back on us, no matter what we've done. You're always there for us, always loving us, always willing to forgive us when we turn to you. Thank you, God, for the story, for this reminder of your great love for us. God, help us to share your forgiveness with the people around us. We love you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, boys and girls, thanks for dropping in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're finding some good things to learn, some good things to do, and uh, would encourage you. Spend some time in the Word. Spend some time in prayer. Be nice to your brothers and sisters. Be thankful for what you have. And I hope to see you soon. God bless. Bye.